Hey everyone, I've decided to finally stop waiting for editors, because even if I offer to pay people, somehow these videos just end up getting done and then just never edited, I'm waiting weeks and getting nothing. So just to jump right in, this is the Armored Core 2 stat and build guide. There's not too much change compared to, again, all of them are going to have the same general armor points and other information, but just to go into the quick, unique things starting from the head that, uh, that uh, that this game has. As you can see there are a few more stats uh, compared to the Armored Core 1 head such as if I, this one actually doesn't let you status the stats yet but if you ever have to look at anything really quick to remember what a stat is this one has a very nice help menu that basically details everything out but I'm going to go through all of it anyway here with it because at that point, some of these still don't make sense. They don't under don't explain how output and everything works. So just to jump right in, if there is so the extra stats here are the uh, the voice for the computer is now changed by your head. If there's anything that knocks uh, your uh, your lock on out like ECM or anything like that, there's the system of recovery stat. Just to go after, sorry, also the other part for the head. The auto balancer, which says AC's uh, stability is just an overall thing to help with uh, the landing and defensive uh, stabilities in the games. This one finally has landing uh, stability as well, which is unlike Armored Core 1, if you fall from too far of a height in this game, you will get stunned. It's not necessarily based on height, it's based on speed. The auto balancer helps the uh, helps uh, the say the uh, recovery time on it. But as long as you like even start boosting as you're falling uh, before you hit the ground should help uh, prevent that from happening. Now, the biggest difference in this game is that there is a hacking function. What the hacking function is, is that there are some locked doors, there are some of them block areas that have hidden parts, some are just shortcuts. The biggest thing of note is that hacking goes from 1 to 5, 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. Every door in this game is only a hacking 3 or hacking 4. So hacking 1 is worthless, hacking 2 is worthless, and hacking 5 is worthless. Area place and names the same thing. The uh, the noise cancelers for stopping ECM, biosensor is for locking on to same stuff, this is all generally the same thing. You will note there is a new stat called cooling. Armored Core 2 added a mechanic called heat as well as a radiator part for passive cooling. Weapons or just environments like lava or hot areas will build up heat. Once it gets over a certain point, it will, st it will start to damage the AC and in this game it doesn't impact energy but it will starting in later games. Now you will notice there's a stat here labeled EDPS with no abbreviation this is mentioned not in the manual not in the help menu. I actually went for the purpose of this video and talked with someone from the Japanese speedrunning discord and we worked on translating it. As far as we can really assume this stands for the electronic device performance systems which is everything from the system uh, recovery down is worth some amount of points based on whatever which is added to get this total but it is ridiculously heavily weighted towards radar range so for the most part here it doesn't matter what you have it's almost entirely dependent on radar range for this stat now you're probably going going to ask what does this stat mean towards my build the answer is nothing ignore it it doesn't exist because that's not going to help you with you just want something that has the sensors you want a low sensor interval and everything else that you really want you that just doesn't cost too much energy because there is a overall great head this which in theory has everything great but the but but the energy cost is massive. I would typically recommend the egret. 
The only difference is that it has hacking 3 instead of 4 for the egret. But it has basically everything else. The energy is good. Or if you want hacking for something, this head 8008 slash S spells boobs on a calculator, which is just honestly funny. I don't know how this got through. Now, as for the core, everything else is also here. Obviously, every body part is going to have cooling, but you will, will notice this stat called the OB limit. So, Armored Core 2 has my favorite mechanic for the entire series, which is called Limit Release. And what this is, is that by pressing the combination of Look Up, Look Down, and Over Boost at the same time, you will get a period of time where you have infinite energy and increased movement. Which is basically the, the OB limit of 3,900, just consider it 39 seconds. I don't have the exact math, but that's typically how, how I view it. But once this time ends, you have zero energy for the same period of time. Point is, if you have anything that costs energy, if you're in a tank and just need to go and just chase it down and kill it the ob the the limit release is awesome again my favorite you can get a tank in this game going faster than than the average biped in armored core for answer and it is fabulous if you if you saw the arena challenge i did the other week which is doing the entire armor core 2 uh, arena before uh, the limit release timer ends that's basically what i was doing just that the entire time, it's great. As for arms, we now have other stats for like, uh, I forget if energy supply was in Armored Core 1, but long story short, the energy supply is a percent multiplier to your left arm blade for damage or the energy shields in this game for added defense. An energy supply of, of, of uh, 100 is just there is no no increase or decrease to it if if the stat is under is is under uh, 100 then there is a penalty to it and this is the highest with a 35 percent increase to damage or the shield block so recoil uh, recoil control for the most part just just helps benefit uh, the fire rate of a very high fire rate weapon. At least that's what it is in, inside other games. Let's obviously double check here. The main point of th that I'm trying to point out here is that you have things that you can look at. I just realized this is not an order of location. That's actually really stupid. Yep, so... As it states here, recoils, recoil, this is why I'm going over this video here. I could have just said, check this help menu. This is the worst help menu on the goddamn planet. Thank you for letting us know the recoil control stat is the recoil control value. Basically, if you've got a very fast firing weapon, it helps keep it go fast. As well as if you've got a really high-powered weapon like a bazooka that's got recoil. It just helps overall fire rate. The accuracy goes from like 7 or like 6 to like... Sorry, there it goes. So it goes from between 4 and 10. I believe that a higher accuracy is better, but I basically ignore that stat. Coolings, the cooling as I said for counteracting heat. Legs, the extra thing of landing of to, of landing is stability is just now if you land too hard to get stunned. Boosters are the same. Booster efficiency is some nonsense stat they tried to come up with. That I'm not even sure what the hell they're going for here, because if you look, not ten thousand at forty three hundred cost is eight eighty three. But almost double that. At barely any more is somehow less efficient. Uh, I just early on start with the 1700 one. Once you get stuff later, these other two are available. They're all good. I would just go straight for this one at the start. The FCS is basically the same thing. The note now is that this game actually gives you the sight range. So now you see how far the lock on actually gets you. 
As for really anything, I typically use a sideways, like I said prior, good for missiles and arm weapons. This is amazing if your goal is missiles. It's a bit shorter lock range, but if you have the multi-lock back, you just want to rapid fire missiles constantly, this thing is overpowered. You can get like eight missiles every three seconds and just missiles in this game are very, very strong because they added heat. They fixed the homing from Armored Core 1. This game is really the best game for using missiles. While costly, they're very fun. There's no fight they're not good in. Now, for now four generators. This one's available at the start. Very similar to the Armored Core 3 video. There is no real reason not to just go for the maximum output, especially because about a quarter of the way through the game, you can buy this straight from the shop. That has 13,000 output. I don't know what they were thinking with this generator, but when most of them are getting seven, so after all of your parts and everything from seven to eight, you have 3,000 excess output, you can just triple your output. Triple how fast your energy recovery on from putting on this ridiculously lightweight generator. At that point, I, I don't know why you'd... Yeah, just use this one when you can. Use this one if you're buying a generator early. For So, for the purpose of radiator in this game for cooling, because it doesn't cost additional energy for... for so, what force cooling is, is that if you do overheat... The radiator goes into basically an overdrive and gets this additional heat to try and get it down to stop yourself from taking damage. In later games, it, it costs more energy and that's when, when radiators really matter for do you want it or not. But in most cases, you can use the starting radiator the whole time and you're really not going to have an issue. If you've got extra weight or don't mind the little bit of extra energy and you have some use for it, then you can go and get a better gener a, a better radiator, but the, it really isn't needed in two. Anything like rapid missiles is going to overheat you regardless of what you do. And anything that isn't going to normally overheat, you don't need the better radiator. Oh, also, just to explain, there's a, a on the generator, there's a calorific value stat. This is passive heat the generator actually puts out. Which, so technically, the higher that it is, the worse your cooling is for overall, because it's basically a counter to it, like how energy passive from your parts takes away from the output. But again, in this game, it doesn't matter. Just ignore that stat. Now, as for inside parts, they added a few cool things like mines, missiles... ECM makers. I don't really use them in this game, but there's some good use for it. Ex so, for the extensions, for some reason, there's two relation missiles. This one says more ammo, even though they both have the same, but it's double the damage for almost the same weight. I just use these. Yeah, for the purpose of this game, while there's a lot of cool back weapons, these vertical missiles, and then the missile weapon arms, the rapid locks, can easily get through anywhere that you're stuck at the cost of they cost a lot. Now, as for right arms, because there were a lot of overpowered weapons in Armored Core 1, they tried to make all of them balanced but ended up underperforming all of them. So the three of note that are going to outshine the rest are the MG Saw, which is the 1000 ammo machine gun, which for some reason in this game, all of the other machine guns have some form of deviation unlike armored core one they've added weapon deviation the 500 ammo uh, machine guns pretty spready like you'd expect a machine gun but the mg saw is the only weapon in this game with 100 percent accuracy also just to show as you can see there are weapons that have have recoil built in they will tell you which ones the arms may need recoil control for but for the most part you're going to go with the MG Saw for perfect accuracy, amazing damage and fire rate. But it, like any machine gun, it's going to be costly to use it. But in this game, it's quite nice. The Karasawa in this, because of how all of the other ones were nerfed, is once again probably the best weapon in this game for anyone who 
is just new to this game, especially with a 13,000 output generator. The problem is you don't get it until more than halfway through in this one, unlike Armored Core 1, which gave it to you at the start. But, but so what I also like to look at for the theoretical damage of a weapon, especially for this one, which has some missions with a lot of enemies, are the number of ammo times damage. So this max damage potential is 65,000. This is about 80,000. Uh, this, as you can see, the uh, sniper rifle is about 36,000, which is not even close to these other ones. But as I mentioned for a third one of like the three weapons that really shine if you're really really good at the game and i mean it's gonna if this is one of your first four times playing an armored core game and your first time for armored core 2 i wouldn't recommend it but the flamethrower right arm flamethrower in this game is ridiculous it has a max potential damage of over 200,000, which is more than double the other ones ammo price is still cheap but the thing is it is basically point blank only and manual aim so while you're gonna ask wait how is this so good then for some reason every flying enemy in this game is coded that once its opening rail movement starts or stops it flies straight at you so anything on the ground you can just boost over and flame them they die almost almost immediately bosses because just like armored core one the first one because this is the first installment for this generation, the enemy ACs in inside missions almost all have half health. So you're really only contending with 4,000 AP max in most cases. Something of note, Armored Core 2, Armored Core 2, Another Age, 3, Silent Line, at least at the very minimum, ACs in missions are immune to heat damage, so the heat-based weapons, especially that they added in 3 and Silent Line, are mostly for the arena. Don't really focus on, like, heat-based weapons or the napalm rockets or anything once they're added in, unless you're doing an uh, arena fight. But as just for this, because everything flies straight at you, you can just jump and fly backwards, all the planes will fly right into the fire and die, things on the ground will die. It makes quick work of really anything in the game. Now, as also just to show the arm weapons I was talking about when I mentioned that the missile weapon arms are really good. These rapid locks, if you're ever stuck for the arena, a certain boss in the game while the ammo is going to cost you a lot. Those with these extensions, with the fast lock on fcs which is this one is just gonna destroy everything for you especially if you just over limit over boost around them in a circle as for the as for the other weapons on the back there's a lot of good stuff like all of the missiles are really great in this game rockets if you like rockets are good the cannons are also very nice Almost every back weapon in this game is nice. You even have a pursuit missile, which is four tubes. You just launch out the tube. It splits with a ton of missiles that home into anything close. Shoot it into the middle of a pack of stuff. It'll start hitting a lot of stuff. Honestly, there is no like bad back weapon in this game. Just a lot of bad right arm weapons. As for blades, typically, again, the moonlight exists. Strongest hitting blade. But until, which you get about halfway through actually, but until then, these are all quite nice. Again, blade efficiency, not even sure why that stat exists, just ignore it. And then of course there are energy shields, which I typically don't use them, but it's good for just, if you, if you see missiles coming, you can easily quickly activate it, get a lot more defense, and then put it down. It, you don't really want to hold it on the whole time, but for missiles or large attacks you see coming, the shields can be used very effectively. So at this point, that's everything you really need to know about how the builds work, what weapons to really use. The only reason I even really mentioned the really strong weapons and really weak ones is because if you get, like, I highly recommend just doing your own build and having fun, but if you get stuck, I want you to know what your options are so that instead of ramming your face into a wall for several hours and getting frustrated, which we all know some people just, if they get stuck, get tilted very quickly, these are definitely the options which you can pick. So, 
thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day. Have a great time playing Armored Core.